So I'm Javon from NPR, and I'm on the digital side. Um, so we can reinvent radio for digital devices, but how are we going to do it? The answer is we've got to experiment a lot. And I want to share two such experiments with you coming from different angles. Uh, but before we start, the first thing you have to understand about public radio is, <laughs> is that we are defined by our sound. We tell stories with sound and, 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 and background noise and strong narratives, and we take you places. And if you look at the full history of public radio, every show sounds completely different than what came before it. And that's by design. Um, radio reporters and editors have perfected the art of listening, and that's the critical skill that lets us continue to push the boundaries. It works kind of like this. If you're a reporter, you go into your editor's office, and your editor doesn't want to read your script. They close their eyes, and they listen while you read it. Because when they listen, they can hear how it works and if it works. Um, so that's something really critical we have to remember as we go forth and experiment, that our ears are the most critical tool to see if a narrative works and if it fits our values. So technology changes, obviously. Um, and it lets us do great things. But the one thing technology can't do is save bad storytelling. So where do we begin? One way to reinvent audio is to say, what can't we do on the radio? Or how do we do something completely different? Um, one question we asked is, what does radio sound like if we know where you're standing? This is a project I worked on with, uh, with Robert Smith. And um, we actually tried to do location-based storytelling. And as a bonus, we wanted to see if we could do it using old stories from our archive and giving them a second life. So the very first thing we did was dive into our archives. Robert took New York. I did DC. We spent about an hour and a half, set up some very simple maps to understand what our coverage was like. And we hit the streets to listen with our eyes open. And we learned a ton. Um, um, a lot of stories fell completely flat, but some, like this one, were amazing. This is a story about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and I'm walking up to Ford's Theater, and I'm looking at the steps where John Wilkes Booth was sitting when he decided to kill the President of the United States. So after that, we kind of knew what narratives worked and, and what was going to play in location. But the one thing we realized is that when we tell stories on the radio, the host intro often dates them, and that's because the host has to tell you why you're hearing a story today. So um, listen to this intro from a radio story. The revelers in Times Square this evening will be celebrating more than just the arrival of 2005. They'll also be toasting an anniversary. Tonight is the 100th New Year's celebration there. So Robert went back in and took all these old stories and re-recorded the intros to, to remove the date references, but also peg them in place. Coming up, 10 reasons to love New Year's Eve in Times Square. This is NPR's You Are Here, New York City. I'm Robert Smith. Times Square is an adventure anytime, but it really shines on December 31st. So we could do this. Um, we could do this, and uh, as further validation, uh, people like Chrissy Clark at KQED are doing this with StoryCorps. So something to think about. Okay, let's shift gears and talk about a second way we could potentially redefine radio. That's the radio that I turn on every morning. It's got three knobs. It's super simple. Um, I turn it on, and Morning Edition flows into my, into my kitchen while I'm drinking coffee. So what can we do that's as simple and joyful as that? Uh, and we, we talked about it for uh, a, a brief period of time, and we distilled it down to uh, giving someone a gift. A continuous player should give me what I want, uh, give me what I need, never give me the same thing twice, and surprise me. And that first point, give me what I want, is kind of the fun one. It's, it's a little bit of personalization uh, you know, tuned to my tastes. But we have to be really careful, because that's dangerous. We're a news organization, and we have a responsibility to tell you what you need to know. Um, you know we, we have to tell you the things that you might not want to hear. And we do that on the radio with the 24-7 newscast and with editorial judgment. So we built the player. We built this thing in like two weeks. We didn't talk about it very long, because uh, everything was moot until we could hear it. We had to build it so we could listen. And we learned a ton right away. Um, on the very first day of testing, it threw this story out at us. This was a surprise. This is a story about a priest that lets his friend choose a sacrifice for Lent. That's a six-year-old story. And we were wondering, why am I getting this? And then we realized it was Ash Wednesday. So that's amazing. And that's the kind of serendipity that happens on radio that we strive for. Um, one thing, one value we have to protect in public radio is that it's local. And we have to think about that local connection. So potentially, this is the kind of thing where you're driving from Washington, DC to Philly, and it auto-tunes from you know, your WAMU mix to WHYY. So you're never in radio wasteland. Finally, there's a shared experience that we have to protect in public radio. Nobody wants to be in the back left behind. Everybody wants to be included. So if we personally we have to also allow discovery and give you editorial sentiment to, to make you feel included when you're talking about the Krulwich story at the water cooler. So thank you guys very much for listening. And um, uh, no story would be complete without a shameless plug. If you like what you hear, please consider giving to your local public radio station. Thank you.